We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Hello there, good morning everybody. Um, I wish to welcome you from the Katowice, um, from the IGF 2021 at the Gofte Center panel. Uh, social ethical perspectives of using uh, artificial intelligence, that's our theme for, for today. But firstly, I want to introduce our brilliant panelists uh, that are here for us today. Uh, first, Justyna Duszyńska, Head of Digital Transformation Research Group in uh, Łukasiewicz Research um, Network. Uh, we have also Antoni Rytel, which is Deputy Director of Gofte Poland uh, Program, and uh, Maximilian Poczyński, which is the winner of Impact Creators Contest uh, by Intel. We want to talk about artificial intelligence and its impact on us. Mm, and my first question is for, for Antoni. The Polish government adopted uh, the policy for um, the development of artificial intelligence uh, in Poland a year ago. Um, how can we take from it uh, everything good? I mean, what does it consist of? Could you tell us more about it? Yes, yeah, so first of all, uh... Thank you for for hosting us to the to the IGF team. It is obviously a great pleasure to be here, uh, especially as uh, we are discussing obviously uh, issues pertaining to the functioning of the internet, but also uh, to how we can interact with um, technology in general and with each other through technology. And uh, the A policy is obviously just a vehicle. It's something which. Uh, we set as an outline of our objectives as a government, but also as a country. Um, and th the first thing we need to realize is that the burden and the, the crux of the impact of artificial intelligence will not be delivered by the government, will not be delivered by the private, by the public sector. Uh, we are more of this proverbial stone which can cause an avalanche or at least help uh, direct it in the right direction way, but uh, we uh, aim to be the ones supporting. So um, obviously the first aim we have uh, is to use the potential this technology has for improving it more broadly the lives of our citizens, but Europeans as well. Um, so our estimates say that we have an opportunity of increasing the uh, the GDP growth, the pace of GDP growth by about 2.65 percentage points, uh, which is obviously a lot, but um, you know, we need to put this into a perspective. So we see, for instance, that the AI market is forecast to be about at about $200 billion by 2025, uh, which is uh, obviously seems a lot, but it's actually less than, let's say, a fertilizer market. It's less than a fisheries market. And uh, you know, for some reason, we keep talking about AI instead of the previous ones. And the reason for this is the pace of growth and the impact that it has on the society itself. Um, and uh, for instance, three years ago, it used to be 16 billion. So you can see sort of the, the pace that, that we're looking at. And this is not something we can stop. It's something we can look at and which we can hopefully um, act upon. Uh, so the policy itself uh, consists of about 200 actions, which are split between six categories, uh, but you know, not going too much into the details. Uh, we have issues such as uh, we have legislative issues, which aim at uh, facilitating testing, for instance, which aim at uh, enhancing the security we have, and which also aim at um, introducing AI-related issues to school curricula, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, the other part is uh, direct support. So things like um, development programs, which of course uh, is also very closely related to European policy, which, which we're very grateful for. Uh, 
and but also uh, through equipping schools with relevant equipment at a, and um, in, in in general increasing digital awareness and competences of society so this is the digit, this is the direct support and then finally of course uh, there are quite a few policy related actions obviously we're not uh, as a country able to just unilaterally act uh, on on this issue is something we need to consult and coordinate with our partners both european and international seeing as we're the invitation of the un um, so the policy also sets out the goals out there the goal overall is very simple to have our country but in the broader context as well use the full potential this technology gives us and hopefully emerge uh, successful from the uh, from this this revolution that uh, mostly actually revolves around AI. Hopefully, the uh, policy will help us all to develop in AI. Um, Justina, we we heard something about uh, the uh, the role of the state, but what is the role of the scientist and science center? Um, building AI in Poland. How does Poland look like in this respect of comparison with other countries? Could you tell us more about it? Good morning, everybody, and thank you for having me at this session. I'm happy that we have an opportunity to discuss the topic because it's very crucial. And um, uh, when it comes to the role of science and uh, scientists, uh, we can say that it's very essential. And um, that's why many uh, universities in the uh, EU um, have in their education offer um, the AI courses, uh, which I dedicated to this subject. And France, uh, Netherlands, Ireland are on the topic on the list with uh, their programs. Uh, Poland, with its uh, 34 programs, uh, ranks uh, 11th in the EU. We are um, uh, we are a leader in, uh, in Central Eastern Europe uh, in, with our AI specialized courses, especially in uh, higher education for postgraduate students. Um, uh, since the Brexit, uh, the UK is not uh, in EU, but uh, the UK with its uh, almost 1,300 programs would uh, easily dominate the list. Um, and uh, when it comes uh, uh, to um, uh, uh, to uh, producing, uh, the leader of producing uh, uh, AI specialists, uh, uh, we can say that the leader in Europe is, of course, France. Uh, and um, um, from French universities, uh, uh, graduates of French universities make up 29 percentage of um, uh, AI. Uh, top uh, specialist uh, uh, in the EU. Uh, it's twice as much as in Germany, which is on the second place. And France is also the country where most of top specialists want to um, continue their career. Uh, Poland, uh, uh, even though Poland uh, um, uh, has four percentage share in uh, the EU, um, uh, in terms of producing top uh, AI specialists, uh, it's at the bottom of their ranking of uh, best specialists, uh, same as other uh, CE countries. Uh, that's uh, mainly due to brain drain and migration of uh, um, uh, specialists uh, uh, to other countries. And that's why we have to think how to keep them in our country, how to enable them to uh, acquire new experiences and uh, to, um, uh, to get new competences. And uh, that's why uh, uh, the core of activity in the um, Łukasiewicz Network, uh, Research Network, uh, is a cooperation between um, the scientific community uh, and business. Um, uh, and we think that's a very good uh, um, a way to uh, give uh, our researchers to develop. Uh, and two years ago in Łukasiewicz Research Network, we launched uh, a system of challenges uh, that's our unique and original idea to um, uh, to give in a quick and uh, effective way an offer which uh, um, meets our clients' needs. Uh, and uh, thanks to this uh, system, um, our business partners uh, in 15 days have uh, uh, an idea how to solve their technical problem or how to uh, build um, uh, a uh, solution which they are need. Uh, and uh, after 15 days, we have a team of experts uh, who are ready to cooperate. 
and uh, what's uh, or, or what's more what to, what we can do is also to um, uh, engage um, uh, AI specialists uh, in uh, international cooperation. Uh, and again, uh, in uh, our network, we established a Center for Foresight and uh, International Cooperation, uh, which aim is to connect and support our researchers to um, uh, cooperate with specialists for, from other countries uh, and to involve them uh, into um, a partnership and consortia where, where they have an uh, opportunity to, uh, to develop and uh, to get new experiences. Let's hope to be um, first in Europe, no, not only not only EU. Uh, EU. <laughs> um, Maximilian, as I told you earlier, is um, is um, laureate of the um, Intel contest. Um, Maximilian, could you tell us how and why did you get involved in uh, building NIA solutions, and how do you? And you know, in your perspectives, how should we encourage young people to do the same? Um, good morning. I would like to thank you for the invitation I received. I am a very young person, and it's an honor to me that I can be in such festive place. Um, I am Maximilian Paczynski, and I'm 17 years old. I won the international competition impact into creators, which consists in creating a project related to artificial intelligence. My project FATIC deals with the problem of today's world, which is exhaustion. The main goal is to wake the drivers up from micro C phase, because during it, um, drivers losses, lost focus, which in the worst case can be tragically for them and for other people. But uh, why did I start working on this project? Because I am a person who is curious about the world and I found that topic, such as AI and participation in this project, developed me in general, which later became my passion. Um, when I started the Intel's training, I had no idea of such topic as uh, data science, computer vision, or natural language processing. Currently at schools, it is said that there is such a thing as AI, but it isn't developed. Where it can be used at, and what people gain from it. Uh, Poland is actually doing everything to go in this direction. It's amazing to me that the laboratory of future has a budget over than one billion water. Um, recently, I have tried to imagine such a large amount, but I still cannot. But it doesn't cover high schools. And I think this is a big mistake because high school kids have the most ideas about around the world, about the general world. Education is directed more towards constructing something than understanding the use of something. And I believe that this method is inefficient. Why? Because, for example, on computer science lesson, I learned a series of algorithms where each of which is a different. But I don't learn the most important, where I can use them. In the case of young people interested in, in artificial intelligence, the aspect of use is the most important. An ordinary student, even if he or she is sitting all the time with the best books, they don't create, for example, they understand artificial neural networks from basic. Why? Because his or her high school level of mathematics will not allow to him or, the, or her to do so. But what they can do is understand the meaning of applying in the real life, applying it in real life. Uh, however, the question is how we can help young people in this. I believe that to use a ready-made model where pro ready-made programs where only where students only put a data does need them the most important value. 
satisfaction. Students write a few lines of code, which consists of, of course, a ready-made models, has the impression that he or she created from, from basic. This gives them motivation to improve it and analyze the world around to, che to check created work and another data. It develops his general skills and depends the curiosity to understand the things that are happening around him or her with the name emphasis on a new trend in today's world, artificial intelligence. The Intel i4 Youth project was prepared just like this, and that was the success of this competition. As a beginner, I could understand the application first and then move the next step of development. It is also amazing news that Minister of Development joined to the next edition of this competition. In, I took first place in the world. And all of this is the key to how we can encourage children and young people in artificial intelligence. Thank you, Maximilian. As you could hear, Maximilian won the first prize for creating an AI, AI um, system that helps you not to sleep during driving. So um, once again, congrats. Um, but we know that we have lots of youngsters that are creative and they can develop lots of um, brilliant ideas. Um, but I want to talk about the perspectives out of the other side, of the out of the state perspective, and what uh, what perspectives does uh, Poland have on the development of the new technologies, including, of course, AI, and. I wish to look at uh, this from the perspective of the citizens and the country, and I wish Antoni to tell us more about it. Yes, uh, thank you. This is obviously a uh, very complex and convoluted issue, but um, to put it very briefly, I think Poland is quite uniquely situated uh, in terms of the mix of skills that does uh, occur in our students and our graduates. Uh, we're actually you know, the only country, as far as I know, in Europe which does teach programming from the very first grade. We, uh, as Maximilian said, we've also launched the uh, Laboratories of the Future or Future Labs uh, initiative, which is in fact the largest uh, investment in um, modern and innovative education in the history of this country. Uh, and you know, thanks to this, uh, elements such as microcontrollers or 3D printers will uh, be a part of uh, every uh, primary school in Poland's teaching of, of new technologies, but not just uh, computer science, but hopefully this is at least our objective, uh, also other disciplines, because we um, think that without uh, that, that, that the incorporation of new technologies is actually subject agnostic. So uh, it's not a discipline in itself. It may be if, if people wish to pursue this, but uh, in, it's mostly facilitative for um, teaching a, uh, of pretty much anything really and developing those skills, which uh, we hope uh, will, the future generations will be equipped with. Uh, but uh, so, so de there's definitely a, a large educational potential. We're also one of the largest uh, producer of uh, AI specialists in general. As you said, we're uh, lagging behind a little bit in terms of actually particularly AI specialists. But when you look at the market in general, there is uh, a, a really um, large supply in terms of going out of universities. Uh, of course, uh, we still, uh, just like any country, pretty much, uh, we still, uh, there's still a deficit of about 200,000 uh, specialists, uh, especially in those very narrow and particular areas, which uh, are perhaps rarely used, but when they are, then this is probably where the largest value is generated. Um, the issue, I think, and uh, something which it should be set as a challenge and which we did actually already set as a challenge for ourselves is to direct this potential which undeniably exists um, into the areas of highest potential yield for the economy and which we believe direct indirectly also for the society at large uh, and 
those are areas such as artificial intelligence, such as Internet of Things, such as biotechnology, cybersecurity, uh, and a few other priority sectors. Um, we think that uh, this requires a slightly different approach, but we believe that everyone should have a set of basic competences, uh, which do not only revolve around digital skills, but also uh, around things like problem solving, creativity, co collaboration, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then there should be an infrastructure, both research-wise and business-wise, which is able to take someone with this sort of background and then sort of direct them into most specialized fields where the state isn't the one uh, which will be directing them or, or coming up with them because this is something this is something the market really knows much better and we do not want to be redundant to them. Uh, so obviously, you know, the way is through collaboration, the way is through uh, multi-party discussions, the way is through in, including and engaging the perspective of the private sector in what we're doing here as a state. Uh, and I think that uh, you know, we, uh, as we realize that the role we have, in, in this ecosystem, which is the supportive role, both legislatively and uh, financially. Uh, I think that this is the way forward. I mean, we already have research groups, we already have grants, we already have quite a few tools and programs, uh, both uh, national and European. And I think that uh, if we're able to work together to direct them towards those areas, which actually have the highest potential yield in the next few years or decades even. Um, and I believe this would be the way to go, but we're certainly at your disposal, so to say. Um, we have a um, great surprise because I want to welcome one one more uh, guest in our um, in our team. I would like to welcome Rusłana Krzemińska, which is uh, from the uh, same of the Republic of Poland. Rusłana, thank you for joining us. Um, we had some technical issues, but I'm really glad that we could manage them. Roswana, can you tell us um, how can we prepare the state for the sustainable development of the technology in accordance uh, of our traditions? Uh, hello, good evening, good morning. Uh, I'm glad to be here and I'm sorry for I'm late. Uh, at first, I must say uh, this. Uh, I love AA. Uh, this is my crush and apple of my eye, totally. Um, yet, um, if people are technological uh, beings at heart, like me, uh, what are the implications of this? Uh, ethical frameworks uh, developed in interaction with technology, technological capabilities push back the limit between what we can produce and manage and the events that impact our lives. Science, ethics, religion are more than just human activity, uh, the work of people. Uh, they are also determined by technology. Uh, okay, um, I have another question. Old ethics for new technology, is it a good way? Uh, is it correct? I guess so, yeah, this has to work for everyone's sake. Um, so don't forget values. Don't forget how strong we are. After all, we are Lord and Father of AI. Um, on the other hand, please remember uh, that modern AI um, has a high level of autonomy. And this is correct, this is okay. This is not a big deal, you know. Um, the universe uh, are roomy. Um, so what we need to do is find to a harmony between nature and technology, between soul and mind, between heart and brain, and ask people a simple question. Are you ready for AI? I guess so, I guess so, yes. So let's invest in education and public debate and public consultation. State and social protection systems should promote social inclusion to actively in the public debate 
on AI. Thank you for for that voice. Um, we we had the the state uh, perspective, but um, I want to ask you, Stina, can we expect um, more in-depth projects using uh, AI in the coming months? I mean, um, you work with it, so you have the greatest knowledge about it. Uh, what areas will they cover and what will be, they uh, be relying on? Could you tell us more? Yeah. Um, currently, uh, AI solutions are mainly deployed in um, the digital sectors such as uh, telecommunication, uh, finance, banking, um, media, retail, healthcare. Uh, and that's um, partly due to uh, the amount of uh, uh, data that are uh, being created and um, uh, that are available uh, to AI processing. Uh, and um, in terms of domains and uh, applications, uh, uh, AI is uh, uh, deployed uh, in uh, um, areas such as data analytics, uh, computer uh, vision, NLP, neuro-linguistic programming. Uh, but uh, currently, we can expect that um, uh, uh, most of, uh, maybe not most, but uh, um, many uh, uh, innovations uh, will be uh, deployed in uh, solutions based on uh, IoT, Internet of Things. Uh, and in, two, uh, in 2021, um, uh, it is uh, estimated uh, that in the investments in IoT solutions uh, uh, will increase uh, uh, by over 12, 12 uh, percentage. And by 2025, um, uh, the investments will increase uh, uh, double digit, digit every, uh, every year. And uh, we can expect that um, um, these new solutions uh, will be uh, deployed mainly in areas such as um, uh, smart uh, industries, smart homes, smart uh, um, uh, cities, uh, agriculture 4.0, uh, uh, healthcare, um, uh, security. Uh, so there are many different areas when we can expect these uh, solutions. Uh, and uh, uh, for example, in uh, our network, uh, research network, uh, we uh, use this technology in uh, solutions uh, uh, which are applied in production, robotics, uh, IoT too. Uh, but now we are working, for example, on an uh, automatic text uh, uh, translate, uh, um, translator, translation, uh, text translation system uh, into a Polish sign language. And uh, this solution is... Uh, um, uh, fully, uh, the solution fully uh, uh, is based on AI technology, and uh, that's uh, um, um, that's an example of uh, uh, of a solution which shows uh, how AI contribute to accessibility of people with special needs. Um, uh, so, the, uh, um, as we can see, this technology will be applied in many different fields, and so we can expect them even more. But I think that uh, um, uh, regarding to the topic of our uh, session, what's uh, more crucial is uh, um, uh, is the question if we are ready for them, if we want them, and if we uh, are aware of uh, the impact uh, on uh, our life. And uh, AI technology is both uh, transformative and disruptive, and um, that's very important uh, to be aware of it. And I think that each of us should uh, um, ask this question. And I would like to leave us with this reflection: if we are ready and if we want uh, this solutions thank you i surely can uh, i assure you that we we do want it but um i want to ask about uh, the citizens expectations of the of the country's digitalization from the perspectives of the same can can you tell us Roswana, what what uh, what are the expectations and what are the results of the work um, to fill in with that expectations Okay, yes. Um, I walk into the same uh, of Poland and I see it all. I'm just kidding, but maybe not. Um, citizens' expectations. Um, we see it all, yeah. And most of them are fears. You know, um, um, who do you trust? How do you know? Uh, by how they appear, what they say, what they do, how? we all have fears and one of the most fears <coughs> excuse me of ai 
is just do not I feel about it and what it's uh, capable of. Another major feel is, okay, AI is job killer or bad people doing bad things. Um, and last but not least, uh, the superpower like super intelligence, it kill us for sure. Okay, um, so the government, the state has the role of supporting in development of quality education. Uh, we must say that AI is not just a nightmare or dystopia. AI is a goal, a help, and future for um, healthcare, longevity, and happiness. So, you know, um, maybe it's a mistake, maybe it's not a future, maybe it's now. So, stay cool, uh, be calm, be smart, and take it easy. Uh, we are the future, and the future is now. Thank you. Okay. Um, my next and um, last question to Maximilian is, what vision on AI do you have uh, on the perspectives of a youngster? Uh, your, um, of, of you and all of the young people you represent here. As I said, I'm 17 years old, but as a person who won the global competition based on machine learning, I can say what is the vision of young people about artificial intelligence. We are very curious about AI, and as you can see, we want to participate and learn more and more about it. However, we lost an overgrowth of information which is around of us. We base our knowledge um, on these topics in the internet where different people have different opinions. I think such news uh, about artificial intelligence is that thanks to it, almost 3% reduction in greenhouse gas emission will be to 2030. Another news is implementation of programs aimed at reducing the number of road accidents caused by falling asleep. And I think the best is that even now, we have incredible accuracy in detective no plastic disease. So I think those news about AI are very interesting for young people. And that's why they should be promoted more to interest students more about IT world. We already know, know that we need to further educate ourselves in the concept of AI, because in the future, it will, it will be our everyday friend, not an enemy. And here we must ask ourselves about the revolution 4.0. This is an aspect is exciting, but also partially scares us. As we know in the next 20 years, almost 30% of jobs will be automated. However, as it was during previous evolutions, many jobs will be created. This is where the fear of young people is born. We don't know in what direction to study because we don't know if we will really be able to survive anti retirement in my opinion, the best way of this solution is to talk often about not only about the past, but also about the future. I am happy that Polish government has begun work on this by introducing the subject the present day. However, I believe it should be more focused on understanding the concept of automation. Thanks to this, young people will understand what it is and will reduce their fear of an uncertain future. And we, they will understand the most important thing 
of today's world for bodies, artificial intelligence. I have the other open questions for all of you. Um, if there was a AI solution that has all of the knowledge of the world, what question would you ask it and why? Antoni? I mean, uh, I know the answer will be 42, as far as I recall from literature, but um, but going going back to this literature, I think that it's often that, especially with technology, that we do get the answer, but we do not get, uh, we do get the answer, but we sometimes don't know what to do with this. Uh, and I think AI is uh, quite notorious for providing, I mean, it, it will calculate something eventually, uh, but uh, it can lead to many, many um, interesting conclusions. Uh, one instance I got from uh, a, a project we did with the Department of Defense was that um, there was a project which aimed at uh, detecting um, tanks or enemy armored vehicles. And uh, there was a spectacular working algorithm. It was almost always able to distinguish between a tank or an ATV or an APC. Um, and when they actually deployed this during actual operations, it had horrible results. I mean, it just literally didn't work. And the reason for this was that uh, they only the, the the distinction between tanks was actually, I mean that the, the training set was uh, compiled in a way uh, where tanks were shown during the day and all the other vehicles were shown during the night. So what the algorithm did, it learned that you know, whenever there is a day, then whatever it sees, it's a tank. When it's at night, it's never a tank. Um, and this obviously meant that this the result was useless and the very smart people who worked on this didn't actually notice uh, because even not because they didn't have the expertise or the skill or the uh, or the knowledge but because the the calculations themselves they occur on a level which uh, is at this point already beyond our understanding um so i think that uh, if if i were to uh I mean, I think the largest question, and I'm not sure that AI will actually help us answer it, but hopefully uh, we, we may get it sorted out eventually, uh, is uh, how to, what, what kind of questions should we input to, the, uh, to a system in order to get the answers we actually want instead of the answers which we think we want or the answers which uh, do not actually provide meaningful solutions to us. Uh, so I would I think that the um, the art of asking questions and rhetoric, something which we came up with a couple of millennia ago, uh, is actually more than relevant in the current context as well. Um, I would uh, uh, have if I have uh, if I had an opportunity, I think I would um, ask uh, the uh, AI the question which uh, I think. Uh, we should uh, ask, uh, all of us should uh, ask to ourselves, where do we need you? Yes, where, uh, uh, where, um, uh, where, the, where the technology can be uh, useful for us and helpful and uh, where it can in, uh, you know, support us and uh, where um, I know that the, the AI technology can answer, can't answer uh, where it is, uh, is it harmful, but uh, uh, we should be uh, aware uh, um, uh, that it is uh, uh, in some um, uh, in some spheres uh, harmful as well. And as Maximilian said, um, and uh, I think it's very impressive that young people are so aware of that, that we we need uh, uh, education, yes, uh, to be conscious of um, all these aspects of using uh, this technology. Uh, and um, uh, I think we should invest uh, uh, in education and build uh, awareness. And that's uh, the most important. Thank you, Stina, for, for that opinion. Um, I would like to ask uh, anyone uh, of you, is, is there any question? Uh, please come, come up to the microphone. Uh, Amado Espinosa, Latin America. Uh, to Ruslanda, wh why, why happiness? Uh, do you think a more uh, predictable world will take the humankind to a happier stage? Thanks. Um, 
I think it's a really yes. tough question. <laughs> it's a good question, I think. Um, you know, you hit the nail on the head, I guess. Uh, why happiness? Yes, maybe you have right. Maybe world will make humankind a uh, uh, happy stage. Maybe you have right, sir. Is there any other question? Come up. Uh, actually, uh, I have a question to Mr. Antoni. Well, you've mentioned that we are not uh, really capable of understanding how the algorithms are al already applied and the topics also touch the ethics side. So is it eth ethical that we can apply those artificial intelligence in the kind of vulnerable sectors? I assume we mentioned, you, you guys mentioned the, the medical sector or those things that, that default may be a disaster at some point. And who should be responsible for that? What kind of supervision that is needed? Well, yes, thank you. It's uh, obviously, uh, again, something which we could hold an entire conference on and probably not arrive at an answer, uh, an answer even then. But uh, I guess, um, at least the way I approach this, this issue, but of course, it's not something which uh, you should all feel compelled to, uh, is it's not something which really get a say on as, as a society, as individuals, as states. Uh, it's something which will occur sooner or later, and the reason for this is brutally simple. Uh, with, and it is that you know it's easy for us to discuss whether it's ethical, whether it's sustainable, whether uh, it should be utilized or not. But in the end, um, I will I will find it rather difficult to you know explain to someone who did not receive proper treatment due to the lack of implementation of new technologies or people who ended up um, not being properly diagnosed or waiting longer, too long perhaps, um, that you know, we ended up not using something which could have saved them because we're not sure whether it uh, may or may not uh, be faulty or not. And I think that uh, at some point, while we do not know whether AI will not generate problems of its own, or we're pretty sure it will, but we don't know them precisely, uh, we're pretty sure that it will solve quite a few problems we know already. Um, and obviously, uh, the issue of responsibility is, uh, is key, I think, and this has also been presented often in, in numerous statements that the government has made. Um, the responsibility obviously has to lie on those who either have created the solution or have taken responsibility for it for using it so uh, if if you apply something uh, under certain knowledge then you're the one uh, who, who makes a certain action with support of the ai not the ai makes it for you right so obviously um that there's i think the technology is still not there to replace entirely the human factor in decision making. I don't think there's anyone who, who really is considering going that way. Um, this said, uh, I think that you know, there will be, just like with any fundamental technology, there will be tough questions asked uh, and answers will probably always have to be worked out on a case by case and sector by sector basis. This will take quite some time, I think, but I really don't believe that we have much of a choice in terms of whether we end up using it or not. The question, which which I think we can answer and which we will end up answering each of us, is uh, whether we want it to be applied in this instance and under which conditions we want to do it. And I don't think we can run away from this. We have to take it head on. But uh, And I think that just like with any other technology, which ended up reforming um, the way we think about societies, um, we, we will end up succeeding because that's what we as humankind do. I mean, we're supposed to overcome challenges, not run, for, not run away from it. Thank you for that answer. Is, is there any other question? Uh, oh, we have another one. Come up, please. Just 
just a quick one. How much do we need to understand AI in order to use it? For reference, we don't understand how a dog really works. We train them anyway, but still we don't understand how they work in their mind. How about AI? Do you want to ask any particular person to answer it? So we're opened. I think a brief answer is we don't, uh, but hopefully um, there is at least one person who does. So there's at least one source of reference which uh, will help us um, uh, you know, come up with this. And you know, eventually, of course, you're right. It's not something which um, the, the fact that we're not entirely sure uh, what's going on under the hood is something which should refrain, uh, which should detract us as users from utilizing a technology. We don't understand most of the technologies we're using every day, and this will not change in, in any foreseeable future. But um, I think that we didn't design the human brain, uh, but and therefore we have no reason for knowing how it works. But we when we do design something um we should probably at least be able to figure out whether it makes mistakes or not and if it does then how and why i think this uh, i really didn't, didn't believe this is a barrier but obviously not uh, we're not going in the direction of every consumer has to you know the precise details of an algorithm this is not something which will ever occur um, but uh, I really think that those who design something should really take a responsibility for some, for having at least a directional knowledge of where where it's going and how it can be used. As uh, as as my colleague said, you know, application is key here. And while about eighty percent of us have an idea of the existence of AI, and those people also use these solutions, then only a very narrow group of people know the exact details and i think this is sort of the way it will end up being uh, also also in the future in practice just like any other technology really um and uh, but of course the level of understanding and skills needed to make full use of of this technology just like any other will vary by uh, by application and by institution thank you it is it is said that time, our time is um uh, has come. <laughs> so thank you once again for being here. Thank you, Roswana. Thank you, Stina. Thank you, Maximilian. And thank you, Antony, for, for this um, interesting, incredibly interesting panel. Uh, I think uh, we could talk about AI more than an hour that we scheduled. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here with us, even uh, online. Um, and I hope you have a very great IGF Day Zero day. Thank you once again. Have a good day. <laughs>